So, hello there. Welcome to part two. So, we have here both of our Trinitrons. This is the old one. The Trinitron KV1442 ESP, which is strictly a PAL model and only 50 Hz. I had to modify it. I, have, I put another potentiometer in, para, in parallel with the uh, vertical vertical position, no, sorry, vertical size potentiometer and this thing's hard to open on a bed and I just put a switch to switch between them so I could change vertical size from 50 Hz which is uh, 576 lines and 60 Hz which is 480 lines so that was fixed with that but this guy sadly has some horizontal sync issues which I cannot fix I do not have the experience to fix these issues so yeah and here is its successor the Trinitron I'm not sure what the model is still on this KV M14E which is a more modern version of this all of the potentiometers that were inside this inside of this have been changed by digital potentiometers and all the values are adjusted via the service menu now uh, in the front panel we now have instead of just AGC control and well let, let me show you the front panel for the 1442 we have well this 50 60 Hertz switch we have a uh, vertical hold and we have brightness we also have memory erase auto manual uh, fine and SFA which I have no clue what it is and those are all controls for the tuner we have our volume buttons and we have a hole we used to have a hole here which is where the program control buttons were but they were smashed in and completely destroyed and since I wasn't using the tuner on this thing well I just put a bit of tape there infrared receiver and power button now on its younger brother let me get it here we have this is really hard to open a headphone jack I don't know yet if it is stereo or mono I'm not sure composite input with mono audio uh, brightness which is really hard actually which for some reason I don't know but whatever we have auxiliary input from for the back for the SCART input we have menu I guess this is menu yeah I'm guessing this is menu yeah because when I when I pressed it it changed uh, the settings so here we have TV I guess this is for getting into the tuner and we have AV input which I suppose is this and then we have our volume controls program controls and I'm not sure what this is I think it is for disabling auto switching on this cart but I'm not sure infrared receiver power button that's it and I, what I plan to do is, this one has bad electronics, a, a bad chassis, and I can't be bothered to take out my scope, which is under there. I don't even have a proper probe for it. And start troubleshooting, I don't 
I can't be bothered to do that, so I'm hoping... Oh, and this one has a bad tube. It has a green spot right here. And the it has a little problem with the deflection around this area. So what I'm planning on doing is putting this tube, which is perfectly good. It looks crisp, it looks bright, it looks perfect. Putting it onto this set because well they're just pretty much the same model just with uh, some minor changes I'm hoping they mount the same tube I'm hoping they do have the same tube there are 14 inch sets and well yeah we'll see let's tear them down and here we have them torn apart and yes, they do use the same tubes. They do use the same picture tube. They use an A34JBU10X by Sony. Trinitron, as you can see. Looks like this one was made in 1990. And this one was made... Nope, that's not a date code. Well, whatever. This one, this tube works, and as you can see, the build quality on this old TV, on the old one, which is all analog, is a lot better than on this one. This one has a lot of, uh, well, a lot of free space in there, but uh, yeah, picture tube is what matters. So, I'll be taking the chassis out of this one. And the chassis out of this one, disconnecting the tube, and well, replacing them. And we'll see what happens. Well, I guess I'll have to do some magic on the service menu on this TV later so it adapts to the new tube. So, yeah, here we go. Let's take the neck board out of this one be very careful you have to be very careful with the neck boards um, they aren't the same the neck boards don't seem to be the same they don't look to be the same so yeah here's our neck of the CRT we have uh, I really have no clue what these rung rings right here are all about the flexion yoke and well the CRT itself 25 kilovolt uh, wire right into it not gonna touch that yet I have to discharge it and yeah let's disconnect the yoke which is the other part of the CRT that's still connected I'm not sure if this, if this thing has a degaussing coil, oh, but it probably doesn't. It's it's just PC monitors that have the degaussing coil. So there we go. And that's the yoke disconnected, the flexion yoke disconnected. And yeah, that's about it. Now we have to disconnect the 25 kilovolt um, wire. And we'll take all of this chassis out. And we'll take the tube out. Okay, so after a little bit of work and this, um, I have managed to switch the tube. I have managed to put the new tube in here. Well, the new tube, the old new tube in there and here's the bat tube and let's plug this thing in and hope that nothing goes bang if it does we'll uh, avenge my death please this is really dangerous what I'm doing right now okay there went the degaussing coil which it actually does have it actually does have a degaussing coil um, uh, I'm not seeing anything on the display at all. 
Okay. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Then we have on screen menus. We do. I like that a lot. I do like that a lot. So, uh, let me hook this up to the Mega Drive. And wow, I wasn't expecting this to work, really. I wasn't expecting, whoa, that was, well, I guess that was the tuner. I wasn't expecting this to work at all, really. I had never done this to a CRT. So we'll hook it up to the Mega Drive, 240p test suit, and we'll see how our settings are. Holy cow, I have just swapped the CRT. I, have, I haven't gotten into the, into the service menu. I haven't touched any settings. And just look at this. Everything's perfect. Everything looks perfect. Everything looks freaking perfect. Everything looks freaking perfect. The linearity. Look at that. Look at that. That's a perfect circle right there. I have to adjust. There's a little bit of underscan right here in the left side. That's the only thing I have. That's the only single thing I have to change. Everything, everything looks amazing. Everything. Whoops, that was a bug. That's a little bit of a bug. Oh, that is a bug. That is a little bit of a bug right there on the program, but who cares? I, I I mean really I just swapped I literally just swapped I literally just swapped a CRT and there's no green blood over there the linearity on this corner is perfect Wow I am really impressed by the results I am really impressed. And let's reset this. Let's reset. So that's 60 hertz. That's the Mega Drive over under scanning, by the way. I mean. Wow, I mean, wow. I mean, look at how sharp this thing looks. Just, just look at how sharp this is. Of course I'm running for a custom RGB cable that I made myself with a VGA cable, so it's thick as all heck. But I am really, really, really impressed by this thing. Now I just have to get into the service menu and change the overscan for the left side. And that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Holy crap, I, I, I just can't believe... I haven't tested this on composite though, so we'll see how the composite filters are. So let me grab my... what should I grab? What the heck does output composite? Oh, my... my... my NES, my freaking NES. What else? Let's try that. Okay, let's check the front video input. With the NES. Oh my freaking Wow It it looks beautiful and those are my fab fabulous neighbors with their education, you know. But uh, 
this looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. It just looks beautiful. There is no ringing whatsoever. There is no ringing. We have no ringing whatsoever. This looks so beautiful. I mean, wow. Just wow. Look at that. Holy crap. Now, let's check if this thing does NTSC composite video. That would be the shit, because I would love to play my Famicom on this. I would love to play my Famicom on this. And it's raining now. Good, I guess. I like rain. So, for convenience sake, I have connected my Super Famicom with Yoshi's Island through composite. I, of course, have an RGB cable for the Super Famicom, but, well, let's see if this thing does RGB, I mean, if it does, if it does NTSC through composite. Okay, so far so good, and nope, it doesn't do NTSC. That is a shame. That is totally a shame. It doesn't do NTSC. It does not do NTSC at all. Well, I guess I'm fucked. <laughs> well, whatever. And that's the input in the front. I haven't tried the input in the back. The SCART connector. Maybe, I mean, maybe it, asks, it accepts NTSC through the back. Let's try it out. And nope, it doesn't do uh, NTSC through the back either. Well, whatever, I have all of my consoles connected through RGB. And the, pretty much the only consoles I use through, through composite are my Master System 2, which outputs PAL 60, which this thing will work with, no problem. Uh, my NES right there, which is just PAL 50 composite, and my Famicom, which sadly is NTSC composite, and well, uh, I can't play it on a CRT, I guess I'll have to just use that thing to play Famicom games, because, well, if I got an adapter and put Famicom games on this thing they would run slowly since this thing has an internal clock rate slower than the Famicom since it is the PAL version so yeah that well okay so it turns out this set is old enough not to have service menus yay it has potentiometers in it and those are right there. That is vertical hold. No, sorry. That is horizontal size, uh, vertical size, vertical hold, and horizontal hold. And with those four potentiometers, I have got the picture to look like this. Look at that. How is that? Just look at it. Look at that. Let's let's take a look at, at the a linearity on this. Look at that. Those circles are fucking perfect. Those circles are perfect. That is awesome. That is awesome. And just I mean, just look at these colors. Look at this, I mean, you won't be able to look at these, but believe me, they look awesome. Wow. Wow, just wow. Well, so that's it. That's my new gaming TV with the tube from my old one. A Sony... 
KV M14E. Hope you enjoyed this video and bye.